Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of brilliant idiotness, man. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. We are here. Yeah. We were just watching, uh, because we're recording this on a Monday. Schultz was just showing me uh Jay Williams on ESPN's first take. Oh, yeah. Uh going head to head with Stephen A. Smith. Mm-hmm. And um I I guess the com- I guess the conversation was about Kyrie. I I, I was enjoying whatever personal digs that they were yeah. trying not to take at each other, but taking at each other. Seemed very personal. <laughs> Seemed very personal. You know, yeah. which 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 I can probably see at first take. I'm I'm sure it's a lot of people at first take who have personal gripes with Stephen A. Smith. Why? Because he's Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, but it's it's sports. You're Stephen A. Smith. He likes a different team. Who gives a fuck? Oh, absolutely. But it's just yeah, he's the big dog. Yeah. You know oh, what I'm saying? You know there's what I mean? like envy and jealousy. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm see. not saying that's Jay's position, but I can see yeah. where a lot of people probably feel like that about Stephen A. Smith. You know yeah. what I mean? And Stephen yeah. A., once again, you got to read his book. I love his book. You know, uh, it's called, uh, uh, what the fuck is his book called? Straight Shooter. Yep. You know, and um, the reason I love his book, he talks about personalities that he doesn't like. Like the reason he loves Skip Bayless, because he says Skip Bayless was a natural contrarian. Mm-hmm. So what he hates is people like, a Jay Williams, because he said this in the clip, and we could play the clip, but he said to Jay Williams, like, go ahead, you find everything interesting. That's what Jay said. I find it interesting yeah, that, yeah, yeah. and he said that's what he didn't like about Max Kellerman, because Max Kellerman would say something and then come back on the next day and apologize. Mm. So Stephen A. loves the debate, and he wants you to have an opinion and stand on it. Mm. You know what I mean? And he don't want you to be round about it with it. Yeah, you yeah, know, like yeah, I yeah, find yeah. it interesting. Like, no, say what? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, don't tell yeah, what you find interesting. Yeah, yeah. He said you're talking a lot about finding stuff interesting. Why don't you tell me how you feel? How you feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word yeah, yeah. up. That's what he wants. He wants you to tell tell you how he feels. Yeah, it's a tricky thing, man. And and with Jay, it's like Jay's. You know, when it comes to at least college basketball, he's one of the greatest you know team players in history. But with, when it comes to picking the draft, yeah. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to one on ones, man. You know, it's uh, it's it's not his game. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the one on one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if it was maybe like a group conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it yeah. was like maybe a three on three or something yeah, like that, yeah, or a four yeah. on four or five yeah. on five. But the one on one, something happens yeah, 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 where yeah. he really wilts under the pressure. Nah, you got. You know? I mean, listen, I've seen it firsthand. You yeah. know what I mean? Especially when he gets a head start, dude. When he gets a head start, <laughs> bro, because that's what happened. He was going downhill on Stephen A, and then Stephen A flipped it. Yeah, Because yeah, he tried to yeah, bounce yeah. the ball off Stephen A's head, just to use a metaphor. Yeah. And whenever that happens, yeah. Yeah. It, it, he's putting himself in a very dangerous situation. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. That's all I'm trying to say. And just for anybody who's who's brand new to this brand new podcast, because we are a new podcast. Yeah, we are a brand we new podcast. Started, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you might want to Google Andrew Schultz, Jay Williams, you know. Oh shit! We fucking played one on one. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah. god! I yeah, forgot yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. You want you beat him? I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. fucking destroyed him, man. <laughs> that is crazy. I definitely whooped his ass, dude. No, that is. Crazy. Oh yeah, right there. Jay Williams versus Andrew. Oh, Schultz, do we have a video of it? Oh wow. I mean, you can't really hear it. Yeah, but. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, he missed that shot. I'm not gonna lie. I think this is the day that Heavy was born. Bro. Yeah. I mean, we know it was the day that Heavy was born. The pull up, Rick on purpose. This is Rick the day he went purpose. full heel. The- <laughs> this is the day Andrew Schultz no, decided I'm no, not doing not. this good guy shit no more. Nope. I'm gonna be the bad boy of this shit. See okay. y'all. Oh. See y'all. Oh, 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 Andrew scored one point. I would like to say I'm excited, but you can't be excited about shit you expect. That is the hardest one point ever in the history of one point. Damn right. (laughs) I got the ankle braces on. (laughs) Oh, my God, man. Oh, my God. Damn, Jay catching L's, bro. He had a shot out his ass. (laughs) 
Jay's <laughs> Jay's go right? Yeah, my man in the background working out. Who is he? What Russian, Russian bathhouse attendant in the what, background? That's when I first started getting them Dr. Sandy procedures. That shit looked crazy. What when you when you get sick? <laughs> that shit looked like Sammy Sosa for yeah, real. Yeah, 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 now yeah. I get it. My yeah, God. Yeah. But you know, the, the funny thing is, uh Kyrie Irving elicits this kind of emotion out of people. Mm. And Jay did ask Stephen A one thing that I it was true. It's like, yo, you know, um, he said, why do you, why does it seem so personal with Kyrie? Mm. I don't think Stephen A is taking it personal. I think that Stephen A is just simply like, I am right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right about him yeah. and, and, and what Kyrie does to teams. Yeah. He's a franchise killer. Yeah. That's why I think it comes off. It's not, it's not the fact that Stephen A really cares about Kyrie like that. Ky yeah. Stephen A cares about being right. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I think. And he's right. He's absolutely right. Yeah, Kyrie is not the ideal player to have on your team. He's an absolute magician with a basketball. Unbelievable. I've, I I think he might have the highest offensive IQ in terms of like just scoring that I've ever seen on a player. Like his ability. Really? Br uh, bro. That's a big, big stick. I, I, I mean it. I mean it. Because, Better than the guy he was playing with, KD? Yeah. Really? Yeah, and then don't get me wrong. I think KD is probably the uh, one of the greatest. He's definitely one of the greatest scorers ever. Better than Michael Jordan? No, he's one of the greatest scorers okay, ever. Okay, okay. But what the amount of problems Kyrie has to solve in order to score is way different than KD. Nobody oh, can block KD's saying. shot. He did literally just has to pull up. I see what you're saying. Right? He's seven feet tall. Nobody guarding him at seven feet can. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. So it has to be a smaller guy. He just has to pull up. And then he's an amazing shooter. Boom. He's got great handle for his size for sure. But Kyrie is fucking six feet. Six two. That's what I'm saying. What about he, AI? What about... Steph Curry, Michael Jordan. Nah, Steph's up there too. Steph's up there. But here's bro. the thing: Steph's threat is the three. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah, threatened yeah, by yeah, Kyrie yeah. shooting three off the dribble. That motherfucker is is he already knows he's getting by you. He's solving two more problems after you, and he's gonna find a way to get the bucket. It's unbelievable. That being said, I would never. I would have a, a woman on my team before Kyrie. So I, I would rather a WNBA player <laughs> on my team <laughs> for someone to wash the jerseys. You know. So Allen Iverson, so Allen Allen Iverson to me is like Kyrie's the, like close to AI to me, like AI was that type of person you're talking about. Like he had to solve problems in order to score because he was smaller, had to beat you off the dribble. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Find find sure. finesse ways to get to the basket. You know what sure. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, for sure. You no. think Kyrie's better than AI? Kyrie? More, to me, AI more explosive. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's and, and AI more loyal to whatever franchise he plays. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just toiled away and. Philadelphia. Yeah, I, I listen. You know what you're saying about the WNBA player. You're saying it in jest, but the reality is, one thing that WNBA players are fantastic at are the fundamentals and team basketball. Mm. We need somebody like with, with Kyrie Irving's talent. If he knew how to, if he loved to play team basketball, and I'm not even talking about how he plays on the court yeah. with the players. I'm just talking about how he approaches his loyalty to a franchise. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. He's done this at three different franchises. Yeah. When I saw this yesterday, I wasn't surprised. Yeah. I'm like, this is what Kyrie Irving does. Yeah. And you know what he's going to do when he goes to Dallas? The same thing. The same. He's going to get run right out of fucking Dallas. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to get run right out of fucking Dallas. And here's the thing that's quite interesting. And like, I have a lot of respect for Mark Cuban, obviously. But um, I think what often happens here is like, I think owners and successful businessmen also have big egos. Mm -hmm. And their egos are their ability to manage and lead people. And why would he not have a big ego? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He found a way to do it in business, found a way to do it in tech, found a way to do it with a basketball team. Why would he not think that he can get Kyrie Irving to get on board? Of course he thinks he can. This ain't about getting Kyrie to be on board. Maybe it is. Of it's course, more, bro. It's more so about getting Luca to stay on board. Like, Luca, we love you. Bro, and they we're going to do everything we can at all times to put a team around but you. But Luca so you doesn't want Kyrie. There's nobody that wants Kyrie. They said he. They said they asked Luca, and he said, "Yeah, bullshit." I mean, maybe you know if if they, he says it, he says it. I, I'm sure they they brought it by him, yeah, and yeah, he yeah. knows he needs offensive help, yeah. right? And but I'm just saying, like Luca is one of the smartest players in the league. Yeah, there's no he's way smart enough to stay off carbs. No, he's not. Yeah. He loves, he's a little thick guy. Yes, he's thick as fuck. He is kind of yeah, thick. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like King Magazine, old school thick. Like, oh, really? Yeah, you don't think so? Yeah, I guess he is kind of, yeah. yeah, 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 he is, he is, he is. He's a, yeah, he is, yeah, yeah. I can't, I, I don't disagree with him. Yeah. Yeah. Seems personal for you, though. No, 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 it's not no, personal. No. I like, I mean, I like Luca. You know, I just find it interesting that, you know, Kyrie Irving's so pro-black, you know, and you, you know, sign with 
the the the, the white star during Black History Month. Ooh. You know what I mean? It's kind of crazy. Well, he don't have you a know? choice. You don't got no choice. Yeah, right? maybe that's a punishment. It <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> might be a punishment. You know, I don't know, man. Like, I, I they're gonna have a good offense because of Luca, because of Kyrie. They got a lot of shooters, but D- Dallas defense is like number twenty three in the league. Yeah, bro. It's like, not like Kyrie can D up. He's not going at it. He's not a defensive wizard at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, I, and look, I, if he couldn't make it work with KD in Brooklyn, what makes you think he's going to make it work with Luka in Dallas? I don't know, man. He couldn't make it work with KD and James Harden in Brooklyn. Yeah, I didn't what know makes I, you think you're going to make it work in Dallas? No, there's just nothing. It's, this is just one of those things where he's so talented, he's going to keep on getting opportunities because he truly is talented. Yeah. But eventually you just got to be like, fuck no. And I guess maybe Dallas is going, listen, we got nothing to lose here. Because we are not a championship team. Yeah. We have to find a way to become a championship team. And we got to take pressure off Luka. Luka getting his ass kicked out there. Yeah. He's carrying too much of a load. Yeah. Listen, yeah. man, salute to Mark Cuban. Yeah. Who I just found out was Jewish. We had no clue. I had no idea. No clue. You think clue. Kyrie knows? No. Kyrie thinks he's Cuban. He definitely thinks he's Cuban. <laughs> he definitely thinks, Mark, thinks he's and he is thinks in, Mark Cuban is Cuban. He's in for a Jude awakening. Uh, <laughs> 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 this is going to be really fun. God bless Kyrie, man. Yeah. Uh, in more sports news, Tom Brady says he's retiring from football for good. Mm. All right, what's your take on this? Like, okay, there is this, there is this feeling, there's this sentiment Right, that he threw away his whole marriage to play one more year of football. Do you think there's any validity to that? Yes. Talk to me about that because you're a married man. Yeah, I think it is. Um, and and by the way, uh, I, it's so funny. I was just listening to Nadra Tawab Glover, uh, who I what? love. Nadra Tawab Glover. She she wrote the book uh, Set Boundaries, Find Peace. She's got a new book coming out. I love Nadra. Mm-hmm. But she literally was just talking about how. We have to stop rushing to fill in people's blanks. <laughs> when I'm like, what would we do? No, no, we There'd like be that. no social media. Yeah. There'd be no podcast world if we didn't fill in people's blanks. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes, I do because Tom Brady has played forever. Mm-hmm. You tell your wife, I'm retiring. Mm. Your wife is like, great. Now we about to go see the world. Y'all both filthy rich. So she probably done made plans, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna be doing this with the kids, all types of different things, right? And then you just all of a sudden turn around and be like, God damn. Taylor couldn't even squeeze through the door. Yo, she opened that shit <laughs> that wide was crazy. fuck. <laughs> that, you that was that crazy. Shit, I don't want to say nothing. My but God, man. I mean, come God on, Taylor. damn, Taylor. You just got birth. God damn, Taylor Donkich. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh God damn! But so yeah, just sit down. Tell just sit down. <laughs> Boom. Jesus. But listen. So <laughs> so I feel like they had plans. His wife was, you know, ready to do that, and then he decides, y'all want to go back to play football. Mm. And I think, you know, maybe some arguments ensue. Like you love football more than us might be a tough question for Tom. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> if your wife asks you, you love stand up more than me. I love my wife more. I would hope so. Yeah. Tom may not feel like that. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. And even if I didn't, that's what I would say. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Unless you're Tom fucking Brady. Why would Tom? Because Tom don't lie to nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Clearly. I do think Tom uh, made the wrong decision going to Tampa Bay this year, though. Why? I think he should went to San Francisco. Ugh, but starting over and it's no, just... that that was his dream. He talked about it. He was like Joe Montana was his quarter, his favorite quarterback growing up. Joe Montana inspired him to play the game. Oh, was 49ers he from was, up there? Yeah, 49ers was his team growing oh, up, wow, they and it was just like, yo, you was yeah. a free agent instead of going back to Tampa for a year, go to Fort San Francisco. Imagine, I mean, can you imagine if Tom Brady was in San Francisco? Oh wow, they need, yeah, they need. That's a what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it would yeah. that would have been the perfect ending. I actually thought he would have probably went there next year. Yeah, you know, and and called it a date in. But I mean, yo, he said he's done, but. I don't know. Do we believe he's done? I believe he's done because I think he's going to make more money behind a booth than he is playing football, which is crazy. 385 M's. Isn't that crazy? Um, Yes, but Tom, you got to give give it up to Tony Romo for setting the stage for something like sure, that. Sure, sure. Even though I read an article the other day that said CBS executives had to go talk to Tony Romo because they felt like he's lost it. <laughs> you didn't see that article? No, but I saw everybody trying to say he was about to say the N-word. Uh-huh. How, did, how did he come to that conclusion? Yeah, I didn't think he was. I didn't, I, I watched it a million times. Like I didn't. Yeah. What? I mean, he did. He did do ni, but I thought he was thinking it was the Niners. Really? Yeah, I didn't even hit an ni. 
It was an N-I. Oh, it was an N-I. Was an really? N-I. Yeah, Let me yeah. hear it, bro. I ain't never, let me hear it. Maybe yeah, I never yeah, played North North Angeles. There's three, n- and then he goes, Defenders, really? yeah. Can we play it? Who got the clip? I don't have it yet. Oh, of course, Van found it. Oh, my God. You know Van found it quick. Jesus Christ, man. Got God a Van. The extra yards, the tough yards, the finish on the play. Right there, you got three. And th- you talked about this is the best tackling team. They don't- oh, I get what you're saying. I think he Mid looked Niners, at the jersey, the jersey. and yeah, he was going to call. Yeah, and the yeah, Niners yeah, are playing yeah, that day, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. thinking Niners. He goes three. Yeah. Tough yards, the finish on the play. Right there, you got three. And th- you talked about this is the best tackling. Three, three nickelbacks, maybe? What? Like <laughs> 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 it wasn't three nickelbacks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, let me see. Let me hear it one more time. Wow. The extra yards, the tough yards, the finish. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, but you know what, though? That's how Patrick Mahomes says the N word. What does he say? Because he only say half of it. So he, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, guys? Congratulations to Tom Brady, yo. Did you watch the Grammys? No. Me neither. <laughs> Who cares? No, I'm not going to lie. I was watching it last night. Oh, really? Because I was waiting. I wanted to see. I, Yo, all it takes is one thing for me. I wanted to see Jay Z perform the God Did verse, mm. which did not disappoint, mm. and it was the last performance of the night. That shit was phenomenal. Mm. I mean, watching Jay Z sit at that table with the big dinner. I don't know if that's the Last Supper or the mafioso meal with OG Wan on one side and his his longtime both of his longtime partners OG Wan and Emery Jones on the other side. The only thing I wish is that I wish Jay would have had. His whole team sitting up there. I wish mm. it was OG Wan, Emery, Tata, Jay Brown, mm. Desiree. Like, mm. I wish it was all of them. No disrespect to Ross and Wayne and Khaled, but to watch him do that one verse right there, that would have been crazy mm. to me. That it was, I, thir- I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly uh, enjoyed it. And I wanted to see who won Best Album of the Year. And Best Album of the Year was Harry Styles. What'd you think? I didn't. I don't I, listen. I can never judge something I didn't listen to. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, right? And I saw that with the Grammys a lot this year. We get mad about things that we don't know, which we've had this conversation. I think we was having this conversation on the podcast about fame, right? And uh, fame being subjective. Like, I don't give a fuck that you don't know Bonnie Raitt. <laughs> mm. It's Bonnie fucking Raitt. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't care that you didn't listen to Harry Styles' album and you might have just listened to Beyonce and Kendrick. Yeah. That means nothing. Yeah. Harry Styles was the second highest selling album of last year, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. So clearly it's a big deal. So I wasn't mad at it. You know, I would have loved to see Beyonce win. Hell, to be honest with you, I was rooting for Mary J. Blige. Mm. That's who I wanted to see win yeah. album of the year for Good Morning Gorgeous. But what, what'd you think about the uh, R&B album? What R&B album? So uh, what's Chris Brown lost? Oh. And he was feeling salty about it. But do you think Chris Brown is losing because of maybe some of the mistakes he's made in his life? No. Chris Brown wouldn't be nominated if those mistakes were really holding him back. Ah. The Grammys just wouldn't simply, they would simply just not nominate him at all. Ah. Like, think about it. These award shows get flack for just having people perform. So why would they even nominate him if they were concerned about stuff like that? I Have, have you heard Robert Glasper's album? No. Have you heard Robert Glasper's album, Taylor? I was just listening to it. Because of the Grammys. Mm-hmm. I never heard Robert Glasper's album. How is it? Oh, oh, I thought it was good. <laughs> like, okay, then. What, did you listen no. to No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, but that's my point. I can't sit here and say that they're wrong for giving Robert Glasper the album, R&B album of the year. I didn't listen to it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, I, stuff, huh. Shit like that is so silly. Like, we really think that's because we're in our worlds and our bubbles. That's all that matters. Mm, you know what I mean? And yeah. if we're not familiar with something, we like, who the fuck is that? How could they win? Mm. Do you know how big the world is, bro? Yeah. You know how many people are in America? Yeah. Like, a come lot. on. Stop. Yeah, you're right. Cut it out. That is the problem with, with uh, and I don't want to sound too much like a boomer here, but like social media does give you this illusion that your world is the world. Yes. And I don't blame people for thinking that because your world is the world. 
You know, if you grow up in in China and you see all these famous Chinese people, you're going to think that those people are famous everywhere. And we think that about, you know, I mean, imagine podcasters. People think that about musicians, et cetera. When the reality is most people don't know most people. We had this debate on. I'm telling you, man, because I was even talking about like TikTokers and like, who are we to say these TikTokers? You can't tell me Mr. Beast isn't famous. Well, yeah, he's not a TikToker. But yeah. or whatever the fuck he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? What is he? Yeah. He's a YouTuber. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But he's famous. He is I don't give a one fuck. of the most famous people on the planet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But just because we don't know him, you know what I mean? We act like, oh, Mr. Beast isn't famous. Like fame is the most, fame is probably the most subjective thing out here. Mm-hmm. I think so anyway. Yeah. It's just like, yo, I don't... I, and we also like increase the fame of certain people just because they're in institutions that we like. Boom. You know what that's I mean? That's right. So it's like... That's right. Maybe a Mr. Beast is actually more famous than a person that's like in an HBO show. But because yes. we value the HBO show in a different way, we're like, oh no, that's true fame. I could pick five HBO... I could pick five people on HBO shows right now and they couldn't fill up a mall with 10,000 people like Mr. B. A hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. To be honest with you, there might be one. There might be one right now that can do that. They can fill up the mall? That can fill up the mall. Zendaya? That's the only one. Yeah. She's probably the only one yeah. that could fill up a mall Yeah. full of, like, I don't even know how old those kids were. It was kids, yeah. Yeah, it's, like Zendaya's probably the only one. The numbers he's doing is ridiculous, man. It's just like, it's just hard to compare. But because we look at YouTube and we don't hold it to the same esteem as we do like a, That's a right. HBO. That's right. We assume that there's not like a fame component attached. But these kids grow up not caring about HBO. Like your kids' generation don't care about Netflix. They don't care about HBO. They're the most fam- famous people to about on. Netflix. Oh, you, it's your kids. I can't tell yeah, you they otherwise. Care about but like, but because YouTube the show, is big for them. YouTube is the shit. You, yeah. YouTube, Netflix, and Disney. streamers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube, Netflix, and Disney is what they know. Even though we got to monitor the YouTube thing, because YouTube, boy. Oh, there's some wild shit on. Oh there. my god, we're on it. Yes, <laughs> man. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Two, two recent experiences. I'm at my daughter's cheerleading competition. We had dinner with the parents, and one of my daughter's friends is like, "So how's Scissor?" I was on YouTube and I was watching videos and a video popped up with you interviewing Scissor. Yo, I swear my hands started shaking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 what the fuck? Why does this shit exist? So what, what, what you, happened in the video? You didn't sniff the seat or anything like that. I don't think so. Yeah. Because it was so long. <laughs> I don't know. It was so long ago. This was years ago. Yeah, like Scissor yeah. was on Breakfast Club. A decade ago, yeah. bro. Probably longer. We've been on the air for 13 years. Like, yeah. do you remember when we used to do engine room? We used to run into Scissor all the time. I didn't know that. Bro, Scissor used to record in engine room. Oh, I didn't know now that. Now, we would walk past Scissor. We t- I talked to her all the time in engine room. Like, oh, in and really? out. Oh, what's up, Scissor? Like, you know, like all the time. I probably thought you were saying, like, what's up, sister? Like, <laughs> I, I swear to God. I thought, I thought you were saying, what's up, sister? And then I but just But this was before she popped off. She, she's from Jersey. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just like, I mean, SZA was, we was early on SZA. So it's like, I don't know what that interview was probably like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially. You probably wild. Probably you wild. Probably wild. Probably wild. Probably wilding, yo. Yeah, yeah, Probably yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if, like, it was early. Ooh. Because I'm like, ooh, people might not know her. So I got to make it interesting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's her fault. This is a crazy person, Sean. Listen, I got to do this because people don't know you. If you were more famous, we could just have an interview. Unfortunately for you, I got to go crazy. I don't know, man. I'm not, I, you know, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't even remember. Yeah. But it's just when she said that shit, I'm like, oh, shit. This shit probably happens all the fucking time. All the time, shit. man. Shit. Then I was with somebody this weekend, an uh, OG of mine, very older like 80 plus years old and can you say no and then, i'll say it later and i then, know who i'm wondering if 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 we can share it. i said because this is very cool i'll say it later okay um but they, they were like uh you know i've i've watched a lot of stuff for you before because people send me stuff you know when you talk about me and i went down a rabbit hole <laughs> me and the staff yeah. <laughs> and i look around like, like oh that. shit i said it too i said <laughs> I said, oh, shit, that could go left quick. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, and, what? and all of them started laughing. But you know what I realized? What's that? They got a dirty sense of humor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because old, old people heard it all. Yes. Old people uh, heard it all. Yes. And they don't got time to be offended. They're going to die. Man, please. Yeah. Please. Mm. 
<laughs> Imagine you wasted the last hours of your life being offended. Uh, man, come on, man. Or triggered. Why? Nah. No. Nah, nobody got time for that shit. Um, salute to Hov. Hov closed the multi-billion dollar deal with Bacardi. Billion? I yeah. thought it was seven hundred fifty million. Seven hundred fifty million, but oh, God, I hate you. What? <laughs> oh, I said, oh, you said, oh, oh, oh close a multi-billion dollar bill. I said, Billy, I thought it was 750 million. And then you went, 750 million. <laughs> like you didn't just fucking say multi-billion. <laughs> Stop <laughs> reading. But tell, you know, Taylor always makes things bigger than they are. You know? <laughs> but I think the deal is still a multi-billion dollar because he still got, he still has a uh, stake in the deal. Oh, okay. Or yeah, maybe yeah. his part of it is seven hundred fifty million or something. He like got seven hundred and fifty million from Bacardi, bro. Right. God damn it. Now wasn't this what's the whole deal with this? Because wasn't he accusing them of being racist or something a few months back? I don't think it was racist. I don't know what the fucking shit was. Does Remember there was like some deal notes that he didn't like and because this has been says, going on for a while. It says the agreement is billed as a as marking the launch of the next chapter of Duce and sees Bacardi acquiring a majority interest in the multi-billion dollar brand, while Jay will also retain a significant ownership stake. Mm. So they basically bought a percentage of Duce. Yeah. I think Jay, because Jay owns, I think, 50% or something like that. But he still owns the stake in it, and he just got 750 for whatever reason. I Bravo. don't know. Bravo. Bravo. You seem, you're not happy? No, I'm very happy, man. I just like, I, I just, you know, I don't think that we give Jay the credit that he deserves for just being the entity that he is, mm. you know, like he's just a different, different individual mm -hmm. and, and not just for a rapper, for like who does, who in entertainment does stuff like this? Oh, Jay-Z sues partner Bacardi over financial tra transparency concerns. Oh, so he must have audited them and they didn't want to, uh. Show the money. Mm -hmm. But I mean, listen, man, salute to Jay, man. He got a great team, man. They got a great team. I love, I love Rock Nation. I love what Rock Nation does. There's so much of, you know, my business that, you know, I model after how they move just as a company, just as a unit. Like, I just love the the family vibe of it. I love how, you know, he empowers a, a, a lot of people around him, but not just people around him. He got you know, women in like real big leadership roles and those women are like people like Des. That's, that's really who doing a lot, who doing the biting, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And, the sh and the shaking of the tires and, you know, getting at people when they need to be got at. So, mm -hmm. you know, salute to, uh, salute the Rock Nation. What else we got, man? Are you doing anything specific for uh, Black History Month? I'm existing. <laughs> I am existing and creating Black History. Ooh. By just being me. Ooh. Why? What do you what are you trying to say, Andrew? <laughs> what do you what is, what is, what, is, what am I doing for Black History what is, Month? What is it about Black History Month you'd like to comment on? Is it the 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 police car in Miami that drew criticism or is it the you know chicken and chicken and uh watermelon that was served at the high school in Nyack or is it the affirmative action bake sale that happened? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you Wait, see the affirmative go, action bake sale? No, can we go to that the chicken and waffles in, uh, in, in, uh, <laughs> there's, hold on. There's a high school in Nyack that did what? They had up for the first, the first, uh, the first day of Black History Month, the, the, the school. It's right here. What's the shit called? Chicken waffles and I believe watermelon as well. Yeah. What's the name of the vendor though? Now that's a tricky thing though, because you're you're both like this is racist, but also at the same time you're like this is really awesome. It's not racist though. I mean, it's racial. No, it's not. Aramark is the, the name of the company. day of the first day of Black History Month to put chicken waffles and watermelon on the menu when I'm they like, never have that regularly. Here's the thing: if if everybody, first of all, the first thing I would say is I would ask Aramark, uh, what is your intention by serving this meal? Because there is a story to be told. The reality of the situation is watermelon was a symbol of freedom because mm. after the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, the, the former enslaved started selling, started growing and selling watermelon. Mm. And it became a, 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 a symbol of freedom and a symbol of hope. And sovereign white people didn't like that. So they put the negative stereotype on watermelon. Oh. So it's like we we allowed sovereign, racist sovereign whites to steal our joy. The same thing with, with, with fried chicken. The same thing was happening with fried chicken. They well, were fried chicken is a Scottish dish. Uh, sure. But I'm just saying that 
former. It is. I don't know if it is or not. We started fried chicken. We had this talk already. That's that's our shit. Don't take oh, our shit. I think shit. we googled it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, I don't. Whatever. But all I'm saying is the former <laughs> enslaved people were selling chicken and they were selling biscuits. That's mm. how they were making money. And then that movie came out, uh, Birth of a Nation, in 1915, and they showed all the black politicians bare feet in the office and eating chicken and all greasy, looking all nasty and uncivilized. And that's how the negative stereotype <laughs> of chicken, fried chicken <laughs> happened. There's no fucking way they showed the politicians. Bro, barefoot eating go, it's a silent movie called Birth of a Nation by D.W. Griffith. Go watch it. And they did this on purpose. To, to It was basically like a, a, a double entendre, right? To show people this is what happened if you vote for black people. You know what I'm saying? This is what happened if we'll let black people vote. This is what happened. This would have happened if black people start taking office. Mm. So they put the negative stereotype on fried chicken. Sovereign whites put the negative stereotype on watermelon. So you're saying so you're saying that maybe they were historically um, aware. So maybe this food company wasn't trying to be racist, but rather show respect and honor black history by, you know, uh, using I'm, black uh, cuisine. I'm not speaking for the company. I'm just saying that if people want to start. To, if they want to start avoiding this type of controversy, talk about the intention behind the meal. Right. Because this that is actual black history. What mm -hmm. I just said is actual black history. And I'm not saying nothing that y'all motherfuckers can't Google. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is actual black history. Let's see right there, D.W. Griffith. Look, mm. look, D.W. Griffith's seminal and supremely racist 1915 silent movie about the supposedly, what does that say? Heroic founding of the KKK was a huge sensation when it debuted. One scene in the three hour features a group of actors portraying shiftless black elected officials acting rowdy and crudely in the legislative hall. The message to the audience, these are the dangers of letting blacks vote. Some of the legislators are shown drinking. Others had their feet kicked up on their desk and one of them was very ostentatiously eating fried chicken. That image really solidified the way white people thought of black people in fried chicken. And you know what's so crazy about this? Think about the N word, right? So you gonna stop laughing. This shit is, I mean, listen. It's what it is. <laughs> what do you mean? The politicians. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. Shockingly racist. Like, sometimes stuff is so racist. It was 1915. <laughs> what yeah, are you talking lead, about? bro. That's <laughs> like, what do you mean? It was 1915, Andrew. What are you talking about? I'm so shocked at the racism I saw in 1915. Really? I mean, I don't know. Think about the end. When did right? racism start? <laughs> you know, yeah. when when did it start? When was the beginning of it? Like, that's a good question we got to ask. This is what, what's so interesting about the stereotype of, of chicken and watermelon. Yeah. The N word. Racial slur. Yeah. That's racist, right? We know it's a racial slur, right? Even the first two letters of it? <laughs> yeah, right? We know it's either a The first two letters are either the beginning of a racial slur or how some people describe Patrick Mahomes, right? Because you can't say the whole thing, right? So, 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 you know this, but for whatever reason, we have found a way to take this word and say it's a term of endearment. Mm. It's our word now. Mm. We flipped it and bounced it and made, oh, it, you know, this is, this is our word. We're allowed to say it. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is ours. But when you, you do it with chicken... Then it's bad. And chicken and watermelon was actually ours. Oh. It was actually a symbol of freedom from the beginning. So can white... It was never bad. So is it racist if white people call black people just some some chicken and watermelon? <laughs> well, is that, that racist? Con con intention matters too. Context is everything. Well, if they're trying to be racist. That's right. If you, if you try to be racist and you're like, yo, chicken eater, yo, watermelon eater, <laughs> I might have just had chicken, but how dare you, motherfucker? <laughs> you know, is that racist? Saying? Yes. Intention matters. Yeah. It, it's all about intention. It's all about how you say something. You know, you, 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 it's, just, it's all about context. That's it. All right. What if it's out of respect and kindness? What if it's a, if you meet somebody and you're like, this is like, an, thank you so much. Like, it was such a pleasure to meet you. Like you would have sold the finest watermelons like back in the day. And that's that's racist. <laughs> that's, ra that's racist. That's racist as shit. Like, what? You mean I, what do you mean? And by the way, what do you mean I would have sold watermelons, yo? What do you mean I would have sold the fine? I'm just saying you'd have been a good entrepreneur. Yeah, you would be you you no. are a businessman. No, nah, that's kind that's, that's that's fucked up context. That would have been racist. I think so. But it was a, a sign of freedom. It was a sign of freedom, but it's yeah. all about context. That's what I'm saying. Anytime they serve these meals, it's just all about intention. That is wild. That's the picture right here. That What's is that? wild. And the fact that it was white people playing the role. That is wild. That's the picture. 
Okay. Oh, they got the clip from the movie. Oh wow! You just you just you just want to make Andrew. Oh, I don't know if I can watch this one, y'all. I don't know if I can watch. I don't know if I can watch this clip, yo. I don't know. But that is a funny segment. Watching like super oh, racist oh, old man. movies and see if you don't laugh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hold on. Are you actually gonna play it? You want to see it? Listen. Oh no no don't 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 do that don't do that don't do that don't do that Taylor don't do it don't do it. You know yourself too much. Yeah, no, no. I'm just. I'm, you sure? <laughs> Let's see it, man. All right. <laughs> oh, no, we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do this. <laughs> oh, it's a silent film? Mind you, this is all white people in blackface. Seems pretty organized. Historic incidents from the first legislative session under Reconstruction. Now, all these people are supposed to be black, man. That's crazy. Damn, they're drunk. That's a white person. Oh, no, that is really that black people. Black oh, is it? I don't remember some good paint I was about to say. I was saying, no, that's black. You sure? That's black. Those are white people in blackface, yo. Nah. Nah, that's definitely black. You sure? Oh, you God, man. See, that's how you eating that chicken. <laughs> See, he was... He was <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. He's a fake black. I mean, it's, the, the, the point is, it's, stop it's it. supposed to yo, make you laugh, The though. way he's eating the chicken, stop it, bro. Stop it, Al. The speaker Al. rules that all members must wear shoes. They don't even have them wearing shoes. So the whole point of this is to show that black politicians is uncivilized, lazy, shiftless. This would happen if you put them in power. This is racist, bro. It's racist. It's supposed to be, though. It is a move and carried it all. Whatever, man. This Al is, the, the moral of the story Al, is... Yo, Al... I was dying and him eating a chicken like that, Listen. bro. That's crazy that you was dying. I was laughing at you. The the I was laughing at you laughing at the guy eating chicken. The moral of the story is, man, yeah. stop letting goddamn, you know, people. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor. Stop letting Taylor, people. stop laughing. My man was hungry. Bro, he's been legislating all day. He can't have a little piece of chicken. Stop letting people burst your balloon over goddamn what sovereign whites wanted, man. Eat your chicken and your goddamn watermelon. Yes. Speaking of burst balloons, let's make Chris uncomfortable now. Yo. <laughs> yo. Yo. Listen, what was the deal? What was the deal? What, do you think it was actually Chinese? Yes. 100%? 100% Chinese. Whether it was a spy balloon or a, a weather machine. As the, what the Chinese say it was a weather machine, right, Chris? They said it was a weather machine. Whether it was a spy balloon or a weather machine, it was definitely Chinese. Mm. 100% Chinese. What's mm. your thoughts? I don't know, man. I don't know what they're going to learn about America that we won't already share ourselves. On TikTok. <laughs> TikTok is the ultimate spyware. Yeah. Like, and also, we're a braggadocious country. Like, we don't hide shit. If we got some new shit, we talk about it. We yeah. share it. We put it out there. Like, so you're getting a bird's eye view of America. What are you going to learn from that? Google Earth it. There's nothing you can't see on Google Earth. There's nothing you can't see when you come visit. It's just some peculiar thing. I don't get it. I, um, I'm glad we shot it down just on some like rah, rah, rah America shit. But it feels a little bit like they need to get a win for Biden. I um, you I know mean, what I mean, like a show of force. I, I guess, you know, it's kind of weird, though, because I was telling Chris this yesterday. Three of those balloons flew over America during the Trump administration. One flew. This is the second one that flew over America during the Biden administration. We never heard about those first four because they got got. I don't know. So that's my point. Why do we hear? Why do they? Why do we conveniently hear about these things when they want us? That's to? what I'm saying. It seems like they're just trying to get a win for Biden. Like yeah. Biden needs to, you know, a sign of strength. He needs to show that he's going to stand up against China or yeah. whatever the fuck it is. And that's why I think they let the balloon exist within the the you know our whatever our space. Well, they had to wait. They wanted it to wait till it got over water. They didn't want to shoot it over land because it would hurt somebody. They say it's the size of like three buses, three China buses. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> what? That's I, what they did. I don't buy that shit. What? <laughs> they did, yo. I think that they were just trying to extract all the information. Because I think sometimes what you do is once you know that there's a spy in your midst, mm -hmm. what you do is if you're not going to flip them because you're not going to flip a piece of technology, you try to hack it and just get. Well, they're collecting the it now. Once they shot it down, they're in the ocean collecting it all now. Yeah, but it's going to crash into the ocean. Like, there's other ways you can get a balloon down. I mean, China been tapping our jaw for the past month or so. Yeah, what's up with that? I told y'all that. When that shit happened, when the, uh, the, and, and the when FAA grid went down, what did I say? I said, that's either Chinese or Russians tapping See? our jaw. And, and, and that shit finally, happened with Bank of America. 
What was it? When they, the money was fucked up with Bank of America. Oh, that's right. I said Chinese tapping our jaw. And then what happened? Finally, when America stood up for ourselves, when black people were beating up Asians. Man, shut right? up, man. No. No, right? No. 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 Remember no. when black people no. were beating the shit out of no. Asians for, for no. no apparent reason? No. It wasn't just black people. No. It was a community effort. A black community no, effort. No, it was not yeah. just black Charlemagne, people. Charlemagne. It was Charlemagne. not just black people. Charlemagne. I would not own Charlemagne. that one. Listen, we <laughs> shoot up the schools. You beat up the Asian. Man, shut up. That bro. is a fact. That is not a fact. Bro, I've it, never touched the Asian. I love Asian. You don't? <laughs> I got on a Wu-Tang shirt right now. There is not a single <laughs> fucking Asian in Wu-Tang. <laughs> I had to think about it. There's a lot of them. <laughs> had to be at least one. <laughs> it had to, be, had to be, right? Nope. Yo, why come Wu-Tang was never accused of cultural appropriation? Thank you. <laughs> Thank cared. you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sh- sh- now you see. First of all, what? did you see the 50th anniversary tribute last night to whom? Of hip hop. Hip hop. They did a 50th anniversary tribute to hip hop last night on the Grammys. Mm-hmm. Wu Tang Outcast back to back. Wow. Yeah. Wow. God bless Dipset, but they were nowhere near that stage. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Right. Aaron DMC was up there. Also, oh, the by the way, there, though. the locks came out. The locks came out, which we didn't talk about last week. The locks. You, the lo- we said the locks. No, we didn't yeah. say the locks. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we said, said the locks. The locks. Yeah. Oh, come on, bro. That's what yo. They, I told What's you. Respect? I called him uh, Alex earlier. I called him NBA uh, Alex Media. <laughs> why? Because that's what they calling him now. Wait, wait, why? <laughs> A lot of New Yorkers was they. They was questioning. They was like, "Yo, you sure New York and uh, Alex and Andrew from uh, New York?" And I'm like, "Man, yeah, get the fuck I'm out of here, bro." They was Nobody calling you. Said, they were calling bro. you NBA Alex Media, bro. I still don't understand this NBA Alex Mia. What is it? Non-binary Alex Mia. Oh Man, what? <laughs> that's what they was is saying. that what the NBA Young yeah. Boy is about? No. <laughs> that's what they were saying about Alex. They was calling him. He been trying to get this job. I promise you. Oh, because of the outfit. They was called, I don't know why. The outfit. I don't know why. But NBA <laughs> Young Boy is non-binary? <laughs> but he has the nails painted. Yep. There you go. Hold on. Go. I'm going to show you something. All I'm going to do is type in non-binary in my recent messages. <laughs> now, hold on, hold on. Non-binary hold on, young boy. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to copy and paste this. Now, just show it to me. It's too much <laughs> what technology. Is that? What is that? Say. Y'all let Shokes and non-binary Alex say wow. mob team was more impactful than wu Tang. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Yeah. Who said that? Yes, who I'm said that? Nah, we snitching. I'm not Yeah, saying. who said that? I'm not snitching. Why are they scared? I'm not snitching. Why are they scared, yo? <laughs> who said that? What old motherfucker? 75 years old. old. Yes. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. They claim not to be old, but, but I need to see the birth certificate. Because? I got my doubts. Uh, they, like that. Uh, like that. I got, I got some my doubts on some the clues. I got my doubts wait, on wait, the Wait, wait, wait. Who, who we got? Who we got? It ain't who you think it is. All right. Nah. Do I know him? Yeah. Well? Yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah. Tenderoni Jones. Oh, Mouse. See there? You thought it was somebody. Now I had to snitch on Mouse. Oh, yo, that's... ratting on a mouse is crazy. <laughs> yo, ratting on a mouse is crazy. That cancels out. Yeah, that cancels out. That cancels out. You allowed to rat on a mouse. You, can rat you allowed on to rat on a mouse. mouse. Yo, do you think we're going to be at war with China? There's a, 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 gen- a general that says by 2025. General Sao? <laughs> <laughs> Because that motherfucker's nice. You know what? I'm going to. Uh, you know what? Did General Sal say so? Also, say that <laughs> sentence. Hey, man. General hey. Sal say so? I'm going to commercial because this conversation is Yo, fried. This conversation is fried, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this, conversation, this conversation is fucking. Fried rice, bro. All right, I'm going to fucking commercial, bro. Listen, right. listen. Shall we? Shall we pay some bills? We bro? pay some fucking bills, man. All right, man. Policy genius. Okay, salute the policy genius, man. Uh, now is a great time to take the lead to future proof your family's finances by getting life insurance. And Policy Genius gives you a smarter way to find and buy it, okay? Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers and just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Now, listen, Policy Genius, all right? You can find life insurance policies that start at just $39 per month for $2 million of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a 
week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees and your personal details are private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Let's get back to the show. You got any church announcements, Show say? Um, no. Damn, nothing? No. All right. Oh, I do have a church announcement. Okay, talk to me. What I do have a church can't announcement. Can't Say that again. Yeah, white man can't jump. Oh shit! Yeah, white man That's can't jump. They just announced white man can't jump. It's not coming out until May, but uh, but shouts to that movie. I got a little little uh little thing in that movie. Okay, you on a Jack's team? I'm sure. Um, well, I might not be hooping, my friend. Ooh, might be doing something else. Okay, okay. So okay. why would you be so sure I'm on Jack's team? Yeah, it's racism. <laughs> it's good old fashioned racism. Golly, bro. What? That was crazy right there. What? Just because I'm white and he's white, you thought we would be playing basketball together in the year 2023? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oof. What? Oof. <laughs> what? I've Damn. seen the original movie. Yeah, white guy and a black guy play together. Oh, that is true. Damn, <laughs> it's fucked up, yo. See? God damn, this bro. Guy. I'm racist, bro. Yo, not, not during this month, bro. Not during this month. Also, Dr. Umar posted about uh, you people, the movie, so... Oh, I haven't watched it. I meant to watch it. That's all I care I about. I saw no, no. I saw. I saw. Oh, that's I all saw I care him about. say that there's messaging in every movie. God damn! I didn't that's get. All, to, listen. Oh, I was rushing. I saw it too, and I was like, oh, I gotta click on this when I can. Oh. The problem was he don't be having the link in his shit. All I know is that Dr. Umar posted about it, so my I can't dream wait. has come true. When can we get Dr. Umar on the pod, please? <laughs> Dr. Umar says you gotta pay him, bro. Say again. Say you gotta pay him. Uh, who's against that? Oh, hey, well, shit. Let's set it up, Dr. Umar. Well, I want him on flagrant. Yeah, I don't want. I want. I would rather watch. Yeah, I don't want, I don't, yeah. I'm, I don't want to pay. I'm. Ne I'm never going to pay a guest, but I will donate to his school. That's a good. That's great. Marcus Garvey, Frederick Douglass School. That's right. I'm with that for young boys. Umar, let's make it happen, man. Come on, Umar. Um, you know, I'm executive producer uh, of a movie called 88. You know, we debuted at the Tribeca Film Festival last year. We got bought by Samuel Goldwyn Films. And uh, the trailer came out last week and it comes out on February 17th. And I have a list of screenings. Uh, you can catch us at the Monica Film Center in Santa Monica, California on February 17th. You can catch us at the Mall of Georgia in Bu Buford, Georgia, if you're in the Atlanta area on February 17th. You can catch us in Houston at Regal Bender's Landing uh, in Spring, Texas. Uh, Los Angeles Foothill Ranch at the Regal Foothill Town Center, Portland, Oregon, Regal Fox Tower, uh, Memphis, well, really Cardova, Tennessee, but close to Memphis, Malco Cardova Theater, Memphis again, if you're in the South Haven area, Malco South Haven, uh, Memphis again, if you're in the Oxford area, Malco Oxford Studio, you can go see 88. If you're in the Phoenix area, Scotchdale has it at Harkin Shea If you're in the Columbus, Ohio, Ohio area, the Gateway Film Center has it. And if you're in Houston, the AMC Golf Point 30 has it. So, uh, go see 88. It's a political thriller. Stars Brandon V. Dixon, Tory Naughton, Orlando Jones, executive produced by me. You can go catch it at one of those theaters on February 17th. Okay. Okay, now let's get back to this show. Uh, Netflix removes password sharing rules from their site after user backlash. Thoughts, Schultz? Um, you can't piss off the base, man. Talk to me. Can't piss off the base. So basically what happened is everybody obviously shares passwords. And um, I think Netflix is coming close to running out of people to sign up. In other words, you know, they've reached the limits of people that have computers or TVs that can watch uh, things on Netflix. So what they got to do is find a way to increase revenue still. And they can do that by stopping people from sharing. So if one account has served, you know, six people, they can technically get five more people to sign up if you can't share passwords. Yeah. And uh, there was just a huge backlash on it. And, you know, they, they basically rescinded. They're like, okay, we're going to let you share the passwords. And it was the right move to make uh, on their part. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. Because uh, to me, this is just like shutting down bootlegging. No, no, no. They 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 did the opposite. They what said you mean? they they were gonna stop you from sharing passwords, and then they said, "Okay, fine, you can share." Oh, y'all are idiots. Fuck that. Who's Netflix? Yeah, they didn't do nothing wrong. Yeah, but the thing is that 
in my opinion, they don't have something to hold over people's heads right now. This is not the time. For example, let's say Netflix was had Game of Thrones and it's in the height of Game of Thrones. And episode three, they go, hey, we're going to cut down this password sharing shit. Everybody's signing back up because they need to see the rest of the season. But right now, they're not mid-season on a show that's yeah, so impactful. Like, Netflix is Netflix at this point. Like, do you even give a fuck what Netflix... Like, what show did we... I remember the first time I bought a Netflix account is because everybody was telling me about this show, Orange is the New Black. Exactly. You need a show. Like, when Stranger Things comes back out, I think they should try it then. But after that, I didn't stop with Netflix because Netflix flooded me with so much content. Netflix is literally like when you're at home, like how you flip through channels. That's how we treat Netflix now. They felt, I guess, and they're, this is not like a gut company. They're going off of data. They felt that, I guess, when they uh, stopped people from sharing the passwords, not enough new people signed back up. So what's going to happen is they're going to have, let's say, for example, it's only one password per person. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's six people that we're watching per password yeah. currently. If you go from six to one and those other five don't sign up, You've just reduced the amount of people that have viewed your show by six times. I get it, but they didn't give it a chance. If you respond immediately to backlash, you ain't even give people a chance to be they're like, you know what? They're not willing to risk it. Their stock's already down. They're in the worst, they're in the worst time to actually do it. They've been in the red forever. <laughs> like, like, no, that's not true. They were crushing it during COVID. They were? Oh, my God. They were oh, I didn't like know that. I thought, I thought Disney percentage. Plus popped up during COVID. This could... A Disney also, but they were just crushing during COVID. It makes sense. Everybody's home. They're Everybody's just home. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Uh, eh, whatever. I mean, listen, man. I guess. What you're saying makes all the sense in the world. I didn't even know that it worked like that. Because um, I would assume... I don't know. I thought that if you all sharing passwords, does that count as different views? Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't fucking know. 100%. I don't know. You can have different accounts on it. Yeah. They just want to see hours watched. And the more hours watched, the better. And if people are not watching on them, they're going to be watching on someone else. I mean, they're trying to compete with YouTube. I mean, that's just the reality. Well, well, bug me out when they said with a number of subscribers threatening to cancel their subscriptions, I don't think they're trying to compete with YouTube, bro. Oh, of course. Nah, just, they, you know why? Because here's the thing about YouTube. And I know YouTube does have YouTube Red, which is subscription-based. Man, when you got 55 plus million people paying 40 fucking dollars a month or whatever the fuck Netflix costs. 15 or something. Or whatever the fuck. Like, that's a different ball game. Like, it's a it's a different ball game when people are paying for a subscription and when people are watching something for free. Don't get me wrong. They're all competing for your time and your eyeballs. YouTube made more money than Netflix. They did? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. And more hours watched. Get, but, I believe the more I was watching, but also free YouTube, YouTube just made more money in ad revenue than Netflix. They this did? is the first time. But, 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 you, but Netflix don't make their money in ad revenue. No, no, they made more money in ad revenue than Netflix. Then YouTube made did a subscription. Subscription. Oh, yeah, because YouTube Red is done. They're not doing the subscription that you could do the YouTube, so you don't have the ads yeah. and that kind of stuff. But like, it's inevitable. You can't beat YouTube. It's just like trying to say like you're going to be Google or something like that. It's not possible. But what what they're worried about is eyeballs, right? And if the time watched is going to these other platforms then less people are going to go, I need this subscription. Well, the problem ain't, uh, salute to YouTube. I don't think the problem is YouTube in this situation. I think the problem is all these other fucking streaming services. Uh, they're, they're also- It's Disney Plus with 55 plus million. It's HBO Max with 55 plus million. Yo, uh, HBO on the low- is the GOAT, bro. On the low, Paramount Plus. Oh, so that's all it takes. It takes one show. It takes one show to put you, you on. You see what Yellowstone's doing for Paramount exactly. Plus? Yeah. And, that's, and that's what Netflix, I think, maybe is starting to learn because what Netflix tried to do is replace television. They're like, we're just going to have so much content. We're going to flood the whole thing. We got different shows for everybody. And then YouTube came or uh, HBO came around and they were like, we're just going to continue making great shows that you have to watch. And you know what we do? We fucking watch. Euphoria comes around. Everybody's watching. That's it. Last of Us is on right now. Incredible. Everybody's fucking watching. YouTube's got it locked. And then also, uh, Dis what's that? HBO. HBO. Oh, sorry, sorry. HBO, HBO kept doing that. HBO is the fucking goat when it comes to scripted. Nobody comes close. I, I, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not. And then Paramount know, Plus man. came out with Yellowstone, and then the whole world watched Yellowstone, and all of a sudden it put a streamer on the map. All the Yellowstone spinoffs. The, which are incredible. That dude Taylor Sheridan's killing He's him. a genius. He did Tulsa King. He's doing that shit with Jeremy Piven. I said this months ago on this podcast, but I don't know if people pay me attention because nobody pays me attention until, you know. Until you're right. right. Until I'm right. But. The, the the Netflix model wasn't sustainable. The binge watching. It was something that we all loved, but you literally shoot your load, bro. Yeah. Like if, if I give you a season of a show and you can watch all 12 episodes in a night, I have I have nothing. But if you're HBO and you give me 
12 weeks mm-hmm. of euphoria. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is give me three of those a year and you covered the whole year. Exactly. It's about owning the conversation. We were that's talking it. about this and that's what HBO. Now, the thing is, in order for someone to wait a week to come back to a show, you need to create really good shows. Absolutely. And what Netflix has gotten by with is creating not as good shows, but giving you the binge shit. They give you a cliffhanger, so you just keep watching. Yeah. There's a lot of shows on Netflix that people wouldn't watch if you had to wait a week. But HBO is like, we're just gonna give you the best fucking show. Dude, HBO's percentage, I'm dick riding HBO and I'm happy about it. And I don't even have no shit on HBO. This is just how fucking amazing they are. The percentage that they bat, I've never seen this before. Everything is a hit. House of Dragons comes on. Bang. Well, it's because they take their Last time. of Us. Bang. Euphoria. Bang. It is historically. This isn't like... For years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sopranos. Yeah. The Wire. Yeah. I mean, it's just non-fucking stop. Oh. And it really, they invest in creators. They invest in great showrunners, great writers, and they execute. And they also invest in talent. Like, if you notice with HBO, if they like you as an actor... You pop up in their other shit too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, you yeah, almost yeah. become like a star of HBO. Yeah. Remember when we were doing all the MTV shows and we would just do five different ones? Absolutely. You become like a star of the network, but they fucking got it locked. And I think at the end of the day, that's what people want. They want stories that they can follow. They don't need all the content in the world, which is what Netflix is doing. They want Stranger Things. That's what Netflix did great. Followed yeah. and, and then you create cultural moments with that. So I think Netflix should shrink the amount of things they're producing and just focus on great quality content. I agree with that. I mean, the interesting thing too about uh, like, you know, I think about like a Paramount Plus, the reason I think Paramount Plus is doing so well right now is because that's what they're doing, right? They're focusing on great quality content. Boom. But another thing that they're doing, even though they're doing a lot of new IP, they're doing it with like seasoned actors. Yes. Kevin Costner. Yes. Fucking uh, Harrison Ford, yes. Sylvester Stallone. Yes. Uh, they got fucking uh, Jeremy Piven playing in one of those shows. Like you know what I mean? Like you, that's you know these people. Like, mm-hmm. So you're gonna you might get the show a chance just because of who the person is. Like I saw some that, uh, yesterday. I was watching TV and they they got fucking they're doing a TV show about Greece. It's the Pink Ladies. Remember Greece? The movie. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so they're yeah, doing yeah. a Pink Ladies sitcom. Well, that's the thing. It's like people are gonna tap into nostalgia. Absolutely. The same thing with you people. It's like think about Excuse how. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck you mean, Shows? <laughs> the same thing. The, the fuck you mean, yo? The, 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 <laughs> what are you talking about? Because we like different world reruns and modern reruns? Yeah, exactly that. But, wow. but the movie, <laughs> the movie, you people, okay? The, the movie, you people. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, the, basically, who's not going to click on a movie that has all of the most famous actors in it, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, have, no, no, because no, no. think about yeah. it. It's like if you people yeah. is in the theater, you got to get dressed, get a fucking babysitter, go buy popcorn, do all that kind of shit. The fact that it's on Netflix at your crib, and you got Jonah, Eddie, Julia Louis Dreyfus, David Duchovny. It's like no yeah. matter who you like, they got it a little thing. So of course you're gonna click and pop on into it. It's I, I easiest Kenya. barrier of entry. I salute Kenya for getting Eddie in a movie. Oh, bro, the execution. Multiple movies. I wanted more funny from Eddie, though. Yeah, so did I. He was like a straight man in the movie. I, didn't want, I don't want Eddie playing a straight man. So Jonah, too. I don't mean a straight man, like, not gay either. No, no, you mean, like, you want him to be Funny. Bigger. I want him to be the wild card. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't get like that. Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac in what? In um, Who's This? With Look Who's Talking. Look, oh, I never you know, saw that. Oh, Look Who's Coming to Dinner. I never yeah, saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. know what I mean? I wanted... Yeah. I want Eddie to shoot. He was, he was like a... Like the, he wasn't the comic relief, is what I'm saying. Yeah, he was he was subdued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, didn't, yeah, want, yeah. I didn't want that for Eddie. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I think that we all want Eddie to just be the superstar, the most hilarious part of the movie. Why else would you have Eddie in a movie? Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Like that, I didn't. I've, I've, and by the way, I've never seen that. I've never seen Eddie be a straight man in a movie. Yeah. Have you? No. Never. No. I mean, maybe you've seen him be dramatic in a movie, but. In a comedy, usually you see Eddie being yeah. that motherfucker that's going after it. Yeah, yeah, listen, 100%. I guess what I'm just trying to say is like, there's a reason why it's number one, and it's because it's so easy for everybody to just turn on and access it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. And I think that that's going to be a model that people try to replicate. If you can get all these stars in a streaming thing, who's not going to turn it on? They do a lot of that, though. I the mean, Valentine's Day movies where they get a bunch of stars to play small roles yeah, and, yeah, thing, yeah. and then everybody goes, all right, fuck it for Valentine's. Let's watch this shit. I, th- I still think Netflix has event television. I mean, the Do- Jeffrey Dahmer was definitely event television. Perfect example. They made everybody an amazing show. Literally yeah. ate it up. 
They, they made an amazing show that everybody locked in on. And I hope that they see that and they go, ooh, this is what people like. Yeah. We don't need to throw out a bunch of fucking shit movies. Let's throw out really specific, beautiful content Absolutely. that people get locked in on. And you can spend more money on that. Yeah, and to your point about HBO, the other thing I like about HBO, and I hope Paramount Plus uh, does this as well, HBO doesn't have a formula. Meaning, I'm talking about a formula as far as, like, the shows aren't formulaic. You know what I mean? Like, every show is different. Yep. The Wire is different from White Lotus. The Sopranos. Sopranos is different from White Lotus. White Lotus is different from The Last of Us. The Last of Us is different from Succession. Euphoria. You know what I'm Literally saying? Literally every show they put out is fucking great. That's what I mean. Like I, I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, every now and then you'll, you'll, you'll get to drag the Game of Thrones in the House of Dragon. You know what I mean? But for the most part, every show is different. And um, I hope everybody follows that motto. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you can make dope shit for everybody. You can make dope shit for this part of America. You can make mm -hmm. dope shit for black people. You can make dope shit for Asian people. And, and the other thing about it is that HBO does a good job of, HBO makes everybody feel welcome to watch the show, mm. even if this isn't your experience. And I see that with Yellowstone. Like, oh, everybody yeah. seems to be watching Yellowstone. <laughs> you Hell know yeah. what I'm saying? I was talking to some Native Americans about it. They were like, yeah, we love it. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. like, finally, we're depicted in a way that's more honest. Really? Yeah. And when I was out there at... um that uh hotel out there in fucking utah wow and they're like uh it was on navajo country and it was like yeah we all uh, we all watch it matter of fact like a, a few tribes came together to like thank kevin cost get the fuck out of here i haven't watched it is it good what yellowstone yeah it's great yeah everybody says how great it is no and and what's great is that if you have success in a world continue to make things in the world marvel has done this really well yes why yes, not yes, also yes. do it with yellowstone which they did right but you, create other worlds is what i'm saying like, I want Paramount Plus to also create other worlds. Yeah, yeah, but I guess yeah. what I'm saying is like, okay, for example, you have Game of Thrones. Now yeah. you have House of Dragons, that's right? right? That's right. You have Stranger Things. What other things can you create in the Stranger Things world? You've already done the heavy lifting. Oh, well, Yellowstone, they're doing it. They got two spinoffs of Yellowstone. Uh, what I'm saying is yeah, that's yeah, yeah. good that they're doing that. And yeah. then other shows should also replicate this model. Absolutely. Right? Because we like the world. We like existing in it. You don't have to explain shit to us no more. We know oh, what to expect. Now just have some fun and dance. You know what's so interesting? Uh, Jay Williams. Um, for, when I when I when I create in a scripted world, I always think of that. I always think of could this show have a prequel? You know what I'm saying? Could characters from this show spin off? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like stuff like that just makes success. Like we had Michael Jamal Warner on, and Michael Jamal Warner was talking to us about a show he had on NBC that I didn't even know. I forgot all about this show. Mm -hmm. He was like, "Yeah, I had a show that came on on NBC, but I wasn't Theo. I was." Some other guy, mm. but I was living in Harlem. And mm. I, 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 you remember the name of the show? I forgot the name of the show, Taylor. But I was like, that show would have worked you just, if they would have just said it was Theo. You just made me remember uh, Cosby Show. Yep. Then. Different world. Different world. That's right. Think they, about that. If they would have just did Theo, grown up, living in Harlem, put that shit on Thursday night like people are used to. We already like know they the did world. Different world. It would have killed. We know the characters. Absolutely. Continue if you have yeah. success. In, now, that's if you have the passion to continue creating. But like, generally speaking, if you know how to make a type of show, that is your genius zone. This is what you're so spectacular at. Absolutely. It'd be great if you at least oversaw other shows made in a similar way. And I think that's what Taylor Sheridan has done so fucking well. Was it Malcolm and Eddie? It was not Malcolm and Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway what else we got um shit my man want to do, do some, some asking, asking idiots? idiots let's do some asking idiots man let's do some asking price idiots of eggs has, has dropped though the what the price of eggs has dropped the price of eggs dropped i didn't know that they were up sure i didn't notice they were up i noticed the price of whiting was up the price of whiting was up crazy whiting yeah fish Oh. And Krispy Kreme donuts, them shit is like twenty three dollars a dozen now. Wow. wow! You didn't know that? No, can't believe Taylor acting like she didn't know. Taylor, um, ask idiot. Ask an idiot. Loading on my thing. So oh, it's fair. Oh lord, this means that Taylor got some she made up. No, I didn't. Taylor wants that. This, this this is when Taylor wants to ask us things. No, it's not. But doesn't want. But is afraid to ask, so she's gonna blame it on uh these random people. Let me see. See, it is not popping up on my end. Let's see. Oh, uh, Alex. Oh, this is interesting. This is a very interesting question. Alex Boss 34 says, what do you think about having a negative or pessimistic POV so you're never let down? 
it's it's an interesting strategy. I know people that are kind of like this. I don't relate to it at all, but I think it comes to, I don't believe in this at all and I never do this and I don't think that this is the right thing. I think you need to think positive thoughts. You need to manifest because not just manifesting makes it happen, but at least allows your brain to start solving problems. You figure yeah. out what you want and then you solve the problems to get there. If you tell yourself you can't have something, you won't even begin the problem solving process. But I do understand why some people feel this way, and that's because the pain of not getting something is too difficult for them to handle. So what they do is they convince themselves they're not going to get it so that they can handle the pain when that inevitably happens. And then if they do get the thing, they feel the joy of surprise. I can handle the pain of not get something, getting something. I, I can do that, but I can't handle it if I don't try. Yeah, 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 yeah. If yeah, I try yeah. and I don't, I can handle that. Yeah, but if yeah, I don't yeah. try and I don't get it, I feel or I fail, I feel so bad because I didn't put the effort in. I totally understand everything you're saying. And I will second that and also add that I believe in my thoughts and my words so much. In my life, God, whatever you decide to call the entity called God, I like to say, you know, God is a woman, but whatever you decide to call God, has shown me time after time that your words are powerful. <laughs> mm. And I speak things into fruition sometimes without even knowing I'm speaking them into fruition. Mm. So when I'm intentional about the things that I speak into fruition, mm. a lot of those things have happened in my life. When I've been unintentional, like literally just saying things over and over, like, I would love for this to happen. I would love for that to happen. And I'm finding myself like, oh, shit. That happened to me this weekend was a big, 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 mm. huge revelation of the power of my words. And I told my wife, like, I will never, even though I already knew this, mm. I will be so intentional about my words from now on because I'd be just talking things up. Anxiety. Well, anxiety is different because anxiety is the thoughts. Being that I know the power of my words, I don't let those thoughts escape my mouth. Your thoughts, you can't really control. Only thing when they come in your head, your mind, you think about it, you might even let yourself feel it for a moment. You suppress it. As mm. my therapist says, tell yourself your own hero story to get yourself out of that, that mind state, but I don't speak it into existence. Good. What I've always said, the things I want to happen in my life, I constantly speak about. The things I don't want to happen, I try not to speak about it all. And so I'm just intentional about the things that I that I say. So what he says about being uh negative, I could never, I could never do that. Yeah. I could never approach the world with a negative POV. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or be pessimistic because pessimism has never won any battles. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm going to always, you know, wish for the best. And to your point, if I want something and I say I want it and I tried and didn't get it, it just means that God didn't have that for me, mm. you know? So it is what it is, but I would never be intentionally negative. That's yeah. just ridiculous. I also won't try as hard if I'm telling myself I'm not going to get it. What's the point? Exactly. I have to tell myself I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to put every single bit of effort into this process. And then I feel like an idiot. Like, I kept telling myself I'm not going to get it, 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 I'm not going to yeah. get it, I'm not going to get it. And then when I don't get it, I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the fucking idiot. Go. You told the world. You yeah. told God you yeah. didn't want it. You asked for it. <laughs> you asked for yeah. it. Um, <laughs> oh, big boy Malloy. The big boy Malloy says, do you guys feel like in modern times, religion is becoming taboo? Uh, duh. Yeah, it's a shame because we're not really filling it with anything else. And you can really tell that people are lost. Like people are really looking for focus. They're really looking for guidance. They're looking for, you know, how to be a human being. And, and uh, yeah, and it I grew up with no religion, but I can tell that for the masses, it's it's. You have to fill that void. Yeah. And I don't think that we're necessarily filling it. Now, nah, for me, uh, I just feel like, you know, um, religion, to your point, shows re people are searching for something nowadays that religion can't help them find. What do you think that is? Um, the meaning of life, mm. you know, uh, what their purpose is. Mm. You know, I think the one thing you can get from religion and regardless the purpose is uh, service, learning how to serve, you know, because your true purpose in life, I feel, is service to others, mm. you know. But, um, yeah, I just feel like religion is, um, yeah, religion is religion is not providing what people actually, and I'm just speaking, I'm not saying for everybody, I'm just saying religion is not providing what people need. Like, there's religious leaders that I love to listen to, but not because they're pushing religion down my throat. But they just motivate you. They motivate me. Life. Bishop yeah. T.D. Jakes motivates me. Torrey Roberts motivates me. Yeah. Sarah Jakes Roberts 
motivates me. You know what I mean? When I listen to them, yes, you learn scripture, but even the way they break down scripture and allow you to apply scripture to your life is not religious. You know what I mean? Like it's just, or maybe that scripture. is, maybe it is. I mean, scripture is religious. That's the word of God. They, they just make me want to seek out God. That's, that's religion, man. Is it? I don't know if that's, I don't believe it. I mean, depends your look in religion. I think if you're looking at it in the most altruistic way, it's about you seeking relationship with God. But I think some people put church before God. I think they do. And I really I think do. God would be upset about that. Oh, absolutely. God but, said you so can't that, even find him in a man-made temple. Boom. You know what I mean? So that's that's man corrupting religion. And man is going to corrupt everything that it touches. That's just what we do. But But yeah, I think that there is a place for religion, especially in organizing society. And especially for maybe people who don't, aren't familiar with their passion and aren't familiar with their purpose. Mm -hmm. I think it's very easy for you to become religious about your purpose. You know, if you want to do stand-up comedy, if you want to do radio, it's easy to get obsessed about those things and live a life that's guiding you to that. But if you don't really have that, I can imagine how difficult life could potentially be. Or trying to figure out that purpose, trying to figure out what the point of it all is. And how nice is it to know that like, if you live this way, God is saying that you're doing a great job here on earth and that you're going to go to heaven. And like, that's probably really comforting. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that the uptick in anxiety is absolutely tied with a downtick in religion. A downtick in faith? 100. Yeah, think what, of, think my, about, my therapist said that. My therapist says faith and anxiety can't, can't coexist. He does Think about it. If you have faith that this is exactly how life is supposed to go, why would you be anxious? And the fact that one, Religion is no longer, you know, the, it does, as synonymous with society as it used to be. But two, even religious people seem to have some skepticism about it. So now you can have skepticism about that faith. Now, I'm someone who wasn't raised with it, but I could see the value. And there's definitely envy when I see people going, listen, God's got a plan for me. And this is what the plan is. Yeah. What you anxious about that? I still, but, I guess, but, but that's the tricky thing about anxiety, right? Nine times out of 10, you don't know why you're anxious. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you don't know why you're having these panic attacks. Like, I, you know, sometimes I could get to the root of it. Sometimes I'm like, why the fuck am I bugging out right mm -hmm. now? You know what I'm saying? You yeah. just don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Um, I'm not saying it would get rid of all of it. But, no, no, yeah, but, I feel you. but the hopelessness that I think a lot of people are feeling, you know, it's like. If, I agree. If God is saying, hey, live this way, that's direction. Hey, I was in, I think I told this story. I was in my doctor's office and the doctor was, I had a, I had a, I had some uh, calcific tendonitis in my arm. Sure, yeah. And so it was causing an intense pain. And so when I was at the doctor, like the doctor took my blood pressure and he's like, oh, your blood pressure is high, but it's probably because of the pain. So he goes, um, I want you to think about your, 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 your upcoming vacation. This is before New Year's. Think about your upcoming vacation. Think about things that, you know, make you happy, that make you feel good. You know, do your meditation. I literally sat there for like five, 10 minutes and I, I got so deep into it that I didn't even, you know, he's putting the thing back on my arm and he's like, see, you're fine. So literally my blood pressure came down <laughs> within moments. Isn't that interesting? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, two more. Let's do two more. Uh, Bus Down said, what time period would you travel back to just to observe and wander around? See, this can get tricky for black people. Yeah. Not too many time periods we could just travel back to and just wander around and observe. Yeah. Bus Down. Oh, I know exactly. Whenever they made the pyramids. That's all. That's what I wanted. Really? When they made the pyramids. And and I need to know how the fuck they did it. I think that that will be the next like watershed moment in history. I think in our lifetime, we'll have enough evidence to show that ancient civilizations that are no longer around today were the real ones who made the pyramids. Not maybe aliens or maybe not aliens, maybe just groups of people who 30,000 years ago developed high technology, maybe different than technology we have now, but high technology. And they built all these pyramids around the world. And then there was, you know, global cataclysm and then destroyed most of those people, their lives, their livelihood, and a lot of the technology they use. But I think in our lifetime, we'll find that to be true. 100%. You know, you know so I want to know who built the pyramids. You know, it'd be crazy. Think about this. Andrew Schultz has a time machine. Andrew Schultz went back in time to where the pyramids and the sphinxes and everything were being built. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Somebody put your nose on the Sphinx. The reason they had to shoot it off was to cover the tracks of time travel. Like in Marvel, they have this thing called the TSA, and the TSA goes and fix times line, time yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So if yeah, people yeah. are in moments in time that they're not supposed to be because they're time traveling, Boom. they go and fucking fix it. Wow. What if you already had been back there, bro? I think there's a there's a good case for that. Yeah. Because yeah, when yeah. I went to the pyramids, I felt like no, I'm thinking about this because you did, 
You did this. This is yeah. a picture. Y'all can put it up on the YouTube video. You put your nose on the Sphinx. Identical. It was unbelievable. Identical. It was like a match. I'm like, oh, shit. He did that. Y'all didn't see that picture? You saw the picture. I, I did saw it on the purpose. Picture. It looked perfect. Like, oh, shit. The Sphinx might be, oh, fuck. Do I go back in time in the future and they honor me by making the Sphinx? Holy shit. And then somebody who doesn't like you went to the past and shot the fucking nose off the Sphinx. Hater. <laughs> Whoa. Was it Kyrie Napoleon? or Kanye? Huh? Was it Kyrie or Kanye? Kyrie or Kanye? Definitely Rappaport. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, one more. I like this one. Scroll up, Taylor. Uh, scroll up, scroll up. This is good. Jake Fryer wants to know, would I rather be forever fit and jacked without having to work out or six feet tall? Easy call. Easy call for me. Go. Rather be forever fit and jacked without having to work out. Why? Because, uh, first of all, being tall is overrated. you never been tall. It's overrated. If you tall and you ain't in the NBA, you look stupid. Tall I mean, for no reason, motherfuckers. I'm with you at a certain height. Six, eight or better? No, you should be in the NBA. Come it's on, pathetic. bro. Yeah, yeah, it's pathetic. Come on, bro. It makes no sense. Six, eight or better, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and you ain't yeah, in the yeah. league, bro? You look yeah. crazy as hell. Yeah, yeah, Six yeah. feet is like, eh. Yeah, Six yeah. Six feet ain't even really tall. No, you got to be tall. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you said six feet. I'm taking, even if yo, even if you said seven, two, I'm still taking B by size right now, which is five, nine. Yeah. Um, And jacked. Yeah. You're not having to work out. You done capping or, or what? <laughs> what do you mean? You would take five, 11 and a half in a heartbeat. No way. To be jacked forever and not have to Just work out? Just imagine never having anxiety again, bro. <laughs> That's what being 5'11 Tall and people half got is. the most anxiety. Don't we, don't we chilling? Y'all the we biggest targets. The view. Y'all the biggest targets. <laughs> you know what I mean? You wouldn't want to be jacked. Who, me? Not, yeah, not I, know, I don't work. care to be, be jacked now. I don't care about that. I just want to be slim. I just don't want to be fat. If you're tall, girls don't really care if you're... That is not true. No, nah, there's so true. many tall, out of shape people nah, that nah, can't nah. get no look. Nah, yeah, that, but nah, because nah, they're nah. tall, like the no, this trip. No, no, nah, 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 you, you're 100. Right. I don't believe that. If you're tall, you could be fat. You could be all these things. And you I don't believe that. Like, I, after after the motherfuckers tease you, you, you and say this, you look like a lowercase b, all types of stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> Who? I ain't got time for that. Okay, one more. You want to do one more? Yeah, one last one. What we got, Taylor? Pull up a good one. What's the biggest pause moment of your life? What's the biggest pause moment of your life? <laughs> bro, I'm like Diddy, bro. I'm unpausable, bro. Whoa. You never had a pause moment? Uh, what's the biggest pause moment of my life? Yeah. Nah, bro. What pause? Like, who? What's there to pause? <laughs> Fair enough. I'm, I'm like, what you said? You said we don't pause. We, we fucking fast forward. fast forward, boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get to the climax. The biggest, but I don't have no biggest pause moment. All right, fair enough. Like, nah, for what? Like, Shout to that. I mean, unless you want to say the, that, that wasn't even a pause moment. Y'all paused it, but that was, oh, I know the biggest, no, I do know the biggest pause moment. <laughs> no, now that I think about it. <laughs> no, 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 now that I think about it. Hey, but it's not, it's not to me, but the only reason I'm reminded of this because somebody sent me this yesterday and tagged me in it. <laughs> when they, when they tagged me, when I said, uh, if 6 9 beats his case, I'll suck his dick. Oh, <laughs> oh. <that's good. laughs> That was that was wild. That, that was, was wild. wild. That was wild. That was wild. I don't know why people couldn't find the humor in that one, bro. Did I give yeah. it? Did I sell it? Like, did I really look like I would suck suck this dick or something? Like, I don't know what was going on with you right there. <laughs> Look, I think that was, was a rough wild. week. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like somebody sent me that yesterday and tagged me in it, and they was like, "Nah, bro, we ain't forgot, yo." Like, <laughs> like, it was two thousand fucking twenty three. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna find this shit and read it. Hold on. Somebody literally tagged me in this shit yesterday, yo. Man, Hold you on. Take back that picture you took on the bet. Put you on the bed. What yeah, put you on the yeah, bed? Yeah. Yo, the bed pick was crazy. <laughs> That's that not me, bro. The bed that was pick. not me. That was before Photoshop. That was not me. <laughs> Somebody it wasn't even said, Photoshop look, back look, look then, at this bro. shit, yo. Look at this shit. This is yesterday. Yesterday. Somebody put, see to God, you have a debt to pay. So get on your knees because he beat his case. And to be honest, 6 9 wouldn't even let you. But just to show everyone what a clown see to God is, I can't believe anyone listens to this guy. Like, who says this on air and tries to be gangster at the same time? I've never tried to be gangster. When have I ever tried to be gangster? Hmm. You don't try to be gangster leading with shit like this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I guess that would be the biggest pause moment of my life. Cause for whatever reason, y'all really took me serious. I'll be honest, 
That was the biggest pause moment in my life, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you with Mateo. Mateo yeah. be around. No, no. <laughs> it was that one. <laughs> Salute to my guy, Mateo. Shout out to uh, Mateo, man. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.